a reality set in the Old West but confusingly featured certain technological advances like human-looking robots and mechanical horses, Earth-18 gives a weird nostalgic feeling while helping us review the courageous Western characters released by DC during the Silver Age of comics. It's magical, mechanical, whimsical, yet very phenomenal. Welcome to DC Nez, and today let's reminisce the past in a comical way and see the struggles of our known DC heroes as they are placed during the age of the American frontier as depicted in Earth-18. There are two versions of Earth-18. The first one is published in the Elseworlds prestige format one short story called Justice Riders in 1997 by Chuck Dixon and J.H. Williams III and the second one is seen during the New 52 era published in the Multiversity Stories in 2015. Set in the American Wild West period, the first version story opened in a small town called Paradise in 1873 where the sheriff has disallowed all firearms. We saw an alcoholic sorcerer, Professor Felix Faust, serving his time in the town jail, who is threatening to destroy the town. Felix Faust is rumored to be an immortal as he was known to have been hanged in Deadwood and struck by lightning in Denver. A sudden thunderous explosion transpired at the jail that also leveled the whole town of Paradise, demolished the houses, and killed everyone including Deputy Sheriff Oberon. The streets were glazed over with glass, the water in wells were steamed, every human and animal were stripped to the bone by the flames, and all of their jaws were locked in a scream. U.S. Marshal Diana Prince aka Wonder Woman, the Sheriff of Paradise saw this destruction and vowed to avenge Paradise. Moreover, she felt that she failed to protect her citizens. She then went to a different town to look for people who can help her. She sought Kid Flash Wally West, the fastest gun in the West, who was working as a bouncer in Diablo Wells. Kid Flash's town is in the Alabama Rose and his reputation has preceded him. Kid Flash is also a wanted fugitive as he is being accused of killing Barry Allen in Abilene. Overhearing their conversation, Michael Carter aka Booster Gold, a Maverick-styled gambler from Natchez, Mississippi, offered his services to help them as a gun hand, but Diana declined as she needs more firepower. Diana and Kid Flash traveled to the nations where they met Qatar Johnson, a Native American warrior going by the name of Hawkman. He is a Cheyenne shaman who keeps the law in the nations. He doesn't work the boom towns and he is a father. He can also fly using his artificial wings. Meanwhile, Booster Gold sought an inventor who could help him obtain more firepower. He met Theodore Cord, aka Blue Beetle, owner of Beetle's machines and weapons. Like many eccentric geniuses, he is sometimes considered to be insane. He wears an antenna with his goggles to conduct negative ions to his brain and help him calculate. We then saw the main villain of the story and that is Maxwell Lord, an extremely rich entrepreneur who constructed railroads all throughout Arizona even over the pest-ridden deserted lands. He is very disappointed to Felix Faust for causing delays in his enterprise and as it turns out, he also owns many robots. He also caused the destruction of Paradise. He is a rail baron from the east with an eye to the future and pure evil. Maxwell owns a town called Heldorado in Gila Mesa. Maxwell also has a secret alien partner who has given him new weapons with really advanced technologies. While having dinner at the Gossin Steakhouse, Diana, Kid Flash, and Hawkman were attacked by Maxwell's men. In the preceding gunfight, the riders noticed that the men were taking many bullets but do not seem to be affected at all. They immediately thought that the men are involved in some kind of magic. When they ran out of bullets, they decided to fight hand to hand and there they realized that the men are machines. Booster Gold and Beetle arrived just in time with huge firepower and saved them from the mechanical gunslingers. Noticing that the robots were sent by Maxwell, they then decided to go to Heldorado. Then coming from Kansas City, the story introduced Guy Gardner Esquire. He is also called Kid Baltimore, the Manhunter. Guy Gardner was reported to have previously killed Solomon Grundy and his gang in Tombstone. He is a Pinkerton Agency private investigator who wants to arrest Kid Flash for the death of a lawman called Barry Allen. 
On the way, the riders met John Jones, a mysterious gunman of alien origin who is also familiar with Diana and Maxwell Lord. Like any version of Martian Manhunter, his skin is green and he is afraid of fire. He's not after Maxwell but was seeking the one Maxwell has allied himself with. While traveling, they also saw many towns destroyed like paradise. Upon arriving at El Dorado, they saw the unmoving residents who turned out to be all armed robots. Diana and John saw Felix Faust and Maxwell who explained his plans of building railroads all the way to California. He destroyed paradise because it was blocking his path to progress and he has plans of replacing people with robots. Then Hawkman, John, and Kid Flash face off Maxwell's mechanical soldiers. Maxwell and Diana did a classic western standoff duel. On the other side of town, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle were held up by Guy Gardner as he followed the riders being their companion is Kid Flash. Diana made several shots against Maxwell and soon realized that what she shot was a mechanical person as well. Eventually, Booster and Beetle convinced Guy Gardner to set them free as it will be bad for Guy's reputation if Kid Flash was killed by robots instead of him. Soon after, the real Maxwell Lord presented himself operating a huge mechanical and fully weaponized robotic vehicle called the Lord Havoc. Lord Havoc attacked the riders and set them on fire. Good thing Booster and Beetle arrived with Guy Gardner now helping them. They used Beetle's steam schooner as a battering ram to explode the Lord Havoc. Hence, Maxwell fell and was defeated. Felix Faust tried to escape but was shot down by Kid Flash and Guy Gardner. Felix died and Guy tried to capture Kid Flash. However, the Justice Riders defended Kid Flash. Guy agreed to catch him next time. Diana and John forced Maxwell to talk about the source of his machines. There, they discovered the alien who helped him in these technologies. In the end, they all went to their separate ways, Kid Flash to Mexico to hide from Guy Gardner, Hawkman to return to the nations, John to bring the alien with him to a different part of the universe, and Booster Gold towards Denver. Oh, and Felix Faust was revived magically. The next scene gave us Blue Beetle telling the story of the Justice Riders to Colonel Kent, a famous dime novel writer. His books are called Colonel Kent's Wild West Bravados, and that is the legend of the courageous Justice Riders. She's an angel. Come to save us all. In the second version of the Justice Riders, published during the New 52 era, Earth-18 is frozen in the 19th century, technologically and culturally, by the Time Trapper. Despite these limitations, the residents of this world still tried to push themselves forward by inventing different means of air travel and even a telegraph internet. Moreover, they are protected by the frontier champions known as the Justice Riders. The Justice Riders of the New 52 version have mechanical horses and Earth-18 is opposite Earth-9 in the structure of the multiverse. The character names in this version are somewhat based on the DC characters in the Wild West themed comic books published during the 1950s, the 1960s, and the 1970s. The characters of Earth-18 in the New 52 era include Super Chief, who is the Superman of Earth-18 with the bull's mask for a head like a minotaur. His name is Saganawana and he is the leader of the Justice Riders. He is empowered by the Manito Stone Crystal, usually seen from his chest. Super Chief was recruited by Prime Earth Superman to help them fight the Prophecy, a powerful multiversal being who has kidnapped the Superman of the multiverse to steal their powers. Of course, they won and saved all the Superman. Saganoana's character is similar to the Super Chief who appeared in the series 52 in 2006. John is a Native American whose ancestor obtained a sky stone from the Manito spirit. The stone gave his ancestor many extraordinary powers and he became known as Saganoana. This stone was then passed on to their generations to John from his grandfather. He was then also called Super Chief and he became a member of the Justice League created by Firestorm. The Manitou Stone gives him the strength of a thousand bears and the speed of a thousand deers. 
The ancestor's name is Sachem Flying Stag, and he first appeared in 1961. Madame 44, the Wild West version of Wonder Woman. She is a great equestrian with a golden lasso and bulletproof bracelets. She also has a mechanical horse. Madame 44's character is based on Jean Walker Tame, published in 1961, who is a female gunslinger and Robin Hood of the West. She is the sleekest bandit west of the Mississippi. Jean Walker was the sole daughter of a gold prospector in the American Southwest during the 19th century. She is also the love interest of the 1950s Johnny Thunder. Johnny Thunder is the speedster of the team. When Barry Allen discovered different types of forces similar to the Speed Force, Johnny Thunder was among the flashes of the multiverse gathered by Barry at the House of Heroes to obtain inputs about the new forces. This speedster seemingly can also travel between dimensions. His character is based on John Tane, who first appeared in DC Comics in 1948. John Tane was the son of a sheriff and a school teacher living in the Mormon settlement of Mesa City in Arizona. He grew up to be a school teacher for kids and always absorbed in his books. However, he is secretly a maverick with great talents in horse riding. He soon found himself in a violent situation that forced him to become a secret vigilante. He darkened his hair, changed his clothes, and created the identity of Johnny Thunder. His horse's name is Black Lightning. Batlash is another rider with a mechanical horse. His character is based on Bartholomew Lash, who first appeared in 1968. Born in Texas, Batlash was a gambler, a cheater, and a ladies' man in the American Old West. His parents died because of the corrupt officials in his county, so he became an avenging vigilante. A man who sticks his head in the sand makes a pretty good target. I got business to conclude before I... Thomas Hawkman is the winged member of the Justice Riders. His character is a mixture of Hawkman and Tomahawk. Tomahawk is a DC character who first appeared in 1947. He is a frontiersman and served in Pennsylvania and New York during the French and Indian Wars under Lt. George Washington. During the Revolutionary War, he roved across most of the American colonies, including Ontario and Quebec. He was one of Washington's most capable operatives, leading a band of soldiers under the informal nickname of Tomahawk's Rangers. Cinnamon is based on the character of Kate Manser, a western gunslinger born in Wyoming whose father was a sheriff gunned down by bank robbers. She grew up in an orphanage while honing her shooting skills and developing talents for handling knives and Japanese shurikens. She started to track down her father's killers and became known as Cinnamon. She was first published by DC in 1978. Firehair is based on the American adventurer in the Old West, also with the name of Firehair, published in 1969. When he was a baby, Firehair was the lone survivor of a wagon train massacre by the Blackfoot tribe. The infant boy was adopted and raised by the Blackfoot chief, Grey Cloud. By the age of 18, Firehair was more skillful than anyone in the tribe and soon left to discover his true heritage. He became a protector of those on the plains and sadly was despised by both the whites and the natives. Pow Wow Smith is based on Ohiesa Smith, first seen in comics in 1949 as the Sioux Sheriff of the town of Elkhorn. He left his home, Red Deer Valley, to learn more about the white man's world. His best friend Jimmy enticed him to study in the university. His tracking and expert marksman skills plus his training from the university won him a vital employment as a deputy sheriff and eventually became sheriff, modernizing his people. Strongbow is the archer of the Justice Riders. His character is based on Strongbow, published by DC in 1951. He is a Native American warrior who traveled across North America and helped the native tribes in times of trouble. An enigmatic man, he hailed from beyond the Misty Mountains, and he was the last member of his tribe, which was dreadfully wiped out in a massacre. Since then, Strongbow has become a legendary mediator. 
El Diablo, an expert marksman with his revolver as his primary firearm. This character is based on Lazarus Lane, the original El Diablo and heroic vigilante of the Old West. He first appeared in 1970 in the all-star western comics. Lazarus Lane was a simple bank teller until a gang of criminals nearly killed him and he was struck by lightning. A mystic shaman revived him but he became host to a demon that acted as a spirit of vengeance. The demon would take over his body to become El Diablo and hunt the wicked. El Diablo rides a black stallion named Lucifer. And then we have the Trigger Twins who are speedsters like Johnny Thunder. They are also part of the flashes of the multiverse as shown by the lightning emblem on their chests. They were summoned by the Red Racer together with the other multiversal flashes to face the corrupted Nix Watson. Their characters are based on Walt Trigger and Wayne Trigger, two cowboy heroes in the Old West first seen in DC in 1951. We also saw an Earth-18 version of Sivana who has his own fort called Fort Sivana. In the Arrowverse, Earth-18 appeared in the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover event. Here we saw a version of Jonah Hex who owns a mine in North Dakota that also contained a Lazarus pit where he gained his immortality. When the crisis erupted, Hex's pit became the last existing Lazarus pit in the multiverse so Sarah Lance and Mia Smoke came to Earth-18 to use the pit to resurrect Oliver Queen who had previously died. Sarah and Mia were confronted by Hex menacing to attack them. The two women overpowered him and Sarah, who had already met Hex's version in Earth-1, scarred him like his Earth-1 counterpart and then Mia knocked him out. Jonah Hex is portrayed by Jonathan Sheik. Jonah Hex first appeared in DC Comics in 1972. He is a celebrated bounty hunter on the American Western frontier in the 19th century. His reputation as the deadliest man alive followed him everywhere and he executed hundreds of men. Jonah Hex is a grumpy anti-hero with a profound personal code of honor that held him on the side of good in spite of his violent predispositions. Seems your little ladies have tied your horse to the wrong saloon. It's mine. It's off limits. So what do you think of Earth 18? Which version of the Justice Riders do you prefer? Would you like them to be revived on future comic books? What do you think of Wonder Woman in the War World animated movie? Write down your comments below and thank you for subscribing.